Perfect. I don't actually have um, slides. I just have this animation. So I'm afraid um, that will be up while I speak. Uh, hopefully it's very relaxing for people. Um, but my talk isn't very long, so don't worry. Um, so this is, as I said, it's probably the least geo-oriented um, talk. I'm very much a kind of hobbyist um, coder. And in fact, this is a project that I made um, a couple of months ago when I was in the last two weeks of maternity leave. Um, it's a map of Hackney, which is where I live. And um, the, anima the animation represents the course of a year. Each frame is a day in the year and the month is shown in the top right hand corner. So the streets um, light up in red. Um, if they align with the angle of the rising sun on that day of the year. Um, the animation is made entirely in Python, um, it's plotted in matplotlib and I used OSM and X to get the street geometry from OpenStreetMap. So why make an animation like this? Well, it, really just because I love coding and I realised that I hadn't done any since my baby was born and I had two weeks worth of naps to fill before going back to work and I wanted to make something and I just needed an idea so I was talking to my um, husband about the summer solstice we wondered if um, because uh, we were still in lockdown whether people would find some other way to kind of celebrate or mark the summer solstice um, and I also wondered whether it'd be po possible to find an urban henge um, i.e a street that aligns with the rising sun um, near our house. Um, I had in mind something like Manhattan Henge in New York where there are a couple of days a year where the the setting sun peaks over above the horizon at the exact angle of the cross streets of the grid. I think it's the numbered streets. Um, and I should note at this point that the idea of an urban henge is is totally flawed. It's um, the point of something that like Stonehenge is that the sun is visible at a certain angle just as it pops over the horizon. Um, in an urban setting you wouldn't get that unimpeded view of the horizon so all these so the concept of a hen, uh, urban henge is, is just theoretical it's not real um so so back to the maps i'd, I'd seen um giuseppe salazzo's maps i believe giuseppe is here which is very exciting um i'd seen his maps of street names on twitter and i knew he'd used osm OSM and X, so I um, wondered what kind of what other kinds of data you could access with that tool. Um, and as I started playing, I realised that it was fairly straightforward to find uh, to make a static map where you could find urban henges. But I also realised that was a, there was a kind of a more interesting to me story about how the sun moves throughout the year. Um, before I started this project, I didn't really have a clear conception of the way the rising sun sweeps through um, an arc from the southeast at the winter solstice to the northeast at the summer solstice. I'm sure all our sailors here will will know <laughs> will know that the sun changes position through the air. I hadn't quite um, conceptualized it in my head until I did this. Um, I, you obviously remember kind of seeing sundials as a child but I hadn't realized that it's not as simple as, I, I remember as a child thinking, actually it's not as simple as just drawing a clock face and putting a stick in the center and seeing where the shadows move um, because the, the, the position of those shadows changes throughout the course of the year. Um, so the mathematical steps to doing this um, were a little more complicated than I'd anticipated as with all great coding projects, as we've heard. Um, and that meant while I was doing it, I realized that I had to, um, find calculations for things like the declination of the sun, something called the hour angle, the azimuth, um, and all those calculations fed into a further calculation to find the angle of the sunrise. Um, it also obviously involved representing um, sort of time data uh, graphically. Um, and since it was all done in Python, I figured out how to make the sort of the, the glowing effects of the streets um, based on just a normal distribution curve. So it's fairly maths heavy, but probably A-level maths rather than the uh, algorithms that we've heard about for a lot of the routing and the um, traveling uh, salesman problem. Um, and finally, it involved just making a, an animated GIF. So conceptually, it's kind of... Um, well, I was going to say conceptually it's overcomplicated, not at all compared to the other projects that we've heard about this, e this evening. But visually, it, it, all it tells is a very simple story of how the sun changes position, um, how the path of the sun moves through the year. But it tells that through um, maps and, and how the streets align with that. So the map is kind of a calendar or a diary. And it, for me, it just tells a personal story. I spent a year on maternity leave and even during lockdown, I would spend my days walking up and down these streets, trying to get the baby to sleep um, through midwinter, through high summer in, you know, in, in dark evenings and light mornings. Um, and that's a time that has its own rhythm and its own way of seeing the world. And you experience the place that you live in a completely different way. 
um, time moves on. Um, and as you, as you're walking the baby to sleep, you suddenly realize that the baby's got six months older and, and, and the sun is in a different position and the park feels different and the seasons are changing. So as I said, it was a very personal project, um, a, a way to kind of lose myself in problem solving um, and maps before going back to my day job, which is nothing to do with coding or maps or, or maths. Um, I, I work in policy. Um, so that's, that's why I made it. Um, but as I have a minute or so left, um, I just thought I'd set out a couple of ideas um, that some of which came back to me. When I, I put the maps on Twitter and a lot of people came back with ideas for how this kind of a project could be extended, which were really interesting. One idea was that you could use these kind of calculations to improve um, thermal efficiency for buildings. Um, you could calculate the best position for the solar panels or calculate so solar gain of a building and how to maximize that. Um, another idea was, um, which I liked was if you had a photo and you wanted, if you're a kind of, um, uh, you wanted to identify where, the, if you didn't know where that photo had been taken, but you knew the time and the date, you could narrow down your possibilities by um, seeing where the shadows on that photo fell. Um, another idea was um, useful for urban gardeners who wanted to calculate hours of sunlight. Um, and I also wondered if you could almost kind of make a sundial out of a city and I'm not sure how or why you would want to do that, but I like the idea that it's theoretically possible. Um, so that's it. Thank you very much for, for listening to me talk about a very, very personal project um, that has no real meaning or real world application, um, but it possibly could have a real world application if you were a buildings engineer or an urban gardener or a reverse image search detective. Um, and thank you for all the other talks which I found fascinating. I think that's just brilliant Victoria um, and I'm sitting here staring at it and um, thinking uh, and surprised because um, the map seems to go red when the sun aligns with the streets particularly in March and April and then again in September um, and I'm not sure what that tells us but it must be something about the alignment of Hackney. Um, so a question for you here is, um, I gather you, since you started, you've also gone on to generate hinges for some other cities. Yeah, so um, I mentioned that um, I was thinking about Manhattan Henge when I um, made it. And so um, I've made maps of um, Manhattan, which obviously they glow beautifully um, at a certain time of year. In fact, I think Manhattan Henge has just been the other night. I think it was, uh, 12th or 13th of July um, and San Francisco is another beautiful one because it has lots of different street systems that align at different um, at different points of the year and Milton Keynes is another one that I wouldn't have been aware of actually I, I read um, Watling Street by I um, uh, can't remember the name of the writer but he talks about how, Ma uh, how Milton Keynes was designed actually to align with the uh, I think the summer solstice oh wow I mean, I know it's a grid city, but I didn't know that. Um, so you had, you're not a geo person, and you had 15 minutes of geo fame on Twitter when you first published your maps, and it went, I think it went pretty crazy, didn't it? How did that feel? Um, that was really nice. I, I hadn't, um, I only joined Twitter in the last couple of months of my maternity leave, and that, that was partly, I think, to feel a bit more connected. Um, it's quite odd being, uh, and, and during lockdown and it's, you know, I, as I say, I'm a policy person. So um, I was kind of uh, using Twitter to sort of engage in more policy conversations. But then I, when I um, put my maps on, I was just introduced to this um, really interesting new world of geo. And it's, um, in fact, I'm um, really fascinated by, I'm so sorry, I've forgotten the previous speaker's name, but the idea of um, sort of building up skills as a kind of hacker coder a sort of self-taught coder i'm signing up as soon as I, as as soon as i can oh joanna's code up exactly that's great right. Thanks. So look at that what we've achieved tonight joanna you've got a you've got a client <laughs> <laughs>